Welcome to Tech Photo Blog. This is episode number 86. This week I'm using a new microphone, or, or rather an old microphone with a new connector. So I've had this microphone for a while but never used it in these videos because I didn't have the right connector for my camcorder. And uh, now I've got an external microphone on my camcorder and hopefully the audio quality is better. Leave me a comment on, on whether you think it's better or not and I'll take that into account for future videos. Anyways, this video is about the air gap flash and the air gap flash is basically a very, very high speed photography flash, uh, much higher than the types of flashes you can buy in you know, your typical uh, camera store. So I'll put uh, some links to articles that do more of an overview of the air gap flash and what it's capable of in the show notes. But in this uh, video, I'm going to be talking uh, more about the internals. Uh, so uh, this is only for people who are uh, experienced with high voltage and, and know how to work with it uh, because the interior of the air gap flash uh, inside his metal case can be uh, there can be an excess of, of 20,000 volts and people working with this should know how to work with such voltages safely. Um, so now with that said, uh, basically what I'm going to be talking about and how you can adjust the uh, intensity of the flash is basically by uh, increasing or decreasing the internal voltage. The way I charge the big massive internal capacitor on these air gap flashes is there's a, a flyback transformer which lets me bump up the voltage to a really high uh, voltage. It's sort of the same device that uh, CRT monitors uh, used to work on when they made CRTs. Anyways, uh, basically uh, the capacitor has a bunch of leakage and uh, that causes it to um, need a fairly high current, um, well not really a high current, but relatively high current, uh, high voltage charging circuit. And uh, if you charge at maximum uh, capacity for the flyback transformer, basically uh, the air gap flash will go to something like 25,000 volts. I always ship them at 18,000 volts and um, the way this is controlled is there's an internal uh, 10 turn potentiometer and I'm going to sort of show you where that is and basically when you're turning this and you're turning it uh, clockwise what's going to happen is you're basically going to adjust a 555 timer inside of the uh, circuitry for the air gap flash that sort of causes uh, a wider uh, width um, pulse and basically the width of that pulse width modulation is going to be uh, how fast it charges and basically its maximum voltage. So uh, the more clockwise you turn it the sort of wider the pulse that I'm, I'm sending the charging circuit which is going through this uh, flyback transformer. This might make a little more sense if you check out the schematic. So, uh, the user manual actually has the schematics uh, for this board and uh, I'll put a link to the user manual for the air gap flash. But anyways, the main thing I want to show people here is how to adjust the voltage. You don't need to know all of the theory I was just talking about uh, if all you want to do is adjust the voltage and you're experienced and know how to work with high voltage. There's one tool that you need to make in order to make this change though. Uh, because you're working with high voltage, I didn't want to use just a screwdriver um, a few inches away from high voltage. So basically I made this uh, foot and a half long uh, plastic rod and what I did was I took the tip and I sort of sharpened it just on my grinder and now it's going to act as a screwdriver. And that's uh, basically all we've got here. So it's, it's just going to work as a screwdriver. It's a foot and a half plastic to, to make things safe. And uh, now uh, I'll show you how to adjust the voltage. Okay, so here's the air gap flash and it's got eight screws, uh, four on this side and four in identical places on the other side. And I've already taken those off. So that's the interior. And the first thing I always do when I open up the air gap flash is I discharge it. So I know this is already discharged, but 
just for consistency purposes, I always discharge it and I make sure um, there's no voltage there. And now at this point, what I'm going to do is I have uh, my Fluke DMM here and I have this high voltage probe. Um, this is good, I think it's the 40,000 volts. Does it say, yeah. Oh wait, it's an it's an 80k-40. I think I think it's 40,000 volts, not 80,000 volts. Uh, I'd have to look it up, but I know it's at least 40,000 volts. So it's safe to work with the air gap flash because the air gap flash uh, only goes up to about 25,000 volts. Um, and like I said before, it ships with 18,000 volts. So. Uh, this is the other end of my high voltage probe. You can um, get ones uh, off of eBay if you don't have one uh, of these high voltage probes that are less expensive and sort of have the voltage meter built in. And I'm going to connect the ground of that to right there on that, that sort of ground stud uh, on the air gap flash. I'm going to make sure all the cables are, are nice and away from everything else. Now basically what I'm going to do is I sort of touch this and it'll tell me uh, the voltage. Right now um, there's no voltage in it so it reads zero. <clears throat> so if I turn it on That humming noise means that it's uh, dangerously high voltage, basically. So if I connect this there, we can see that it's about 17 volts, which multiplied by 1,000 is, is 17K volts. And it sort of drops quickly because the actual high voltage probe is draining the capacitor faster than the circuit can charge. So we're at 17, 18,000 volts. I'm gonna turn this off. And I'm gonna discharge it. And now I will show you um, where you adjust the voltage. It's right down there. There's this little white box with, um, a screw, uh, a brass screw coming out of that, and that's a 10 turn uh, uh, potentiometer. Basically, I'm going to stick this down in here. It kind of is the right size, so it sort of sticks into that, and then you can uh, adjust the voltage from up here, being nice and safe. And if you turn it clockwise, it will increase the voltage. And if you turn it counterclockwise, it will decrease the voltage. So turn. So if I turn this guy back on. So now at this point, we will put the probe in there. And we can sort of see that it's at about 18,000 volts. And if I turn it clockwise, you can see now it's at about 20,000 volts when I first attach it. And uh, that spark was because the humidity is kind of high here. And uh, basically the higher your voltage, uh, the more likely you're going to get these random sparks. And uh, the higher your humidity, the more likely you are to get those random sparks. Um, so that was actually a good demonstration there of why I ship it at 18,000 volts. Uh, if it's really dry, you can go uh, all the way up to 25,000 uh, volts. Anyways, um, that's pretty much all I wanted to show you. And uh, there's the trigger button over here, which will trigger the flash. Most people won't need to do this. Uh, the air gap flash at 18,000 volts. Uh, is a really good setting for general photography. Thanks for watching.